Hello and welcome to Rogue Artisans and Crafters, winner of the 2018 Southern Oregon Television Awards for Best Arts and Culture Show. I'm your host, David Glamour Dave Nino. We welcome you, our viewer, to, uh, to our show where we feature local artists and craftspeople here in Southern Oregon. With our show, we talk to our featured artists about how they came to their art, what drives them as artists, find out stories behind their art, their art process, and how their work as artists influences their lives. Today, we're privileged to feature local artist, Corey Leanne. I found Corey on Facebook a few weeks ago. One of her art images caught my interest. I visited her Facebook page and found her uh, to be local. I explored more of her art and was impressed by the style of art that uh, both is representational and a bit abstract. I find her art style cool. And so today we will talk to Corey Leanne about her life as an artist and the work she pursues today with her art. And so welcome to the show, Corey. Thank you. So to begin with, I always ask uh, at the beginning is how long have you been working as a professional artist? Um, I don't really consider myself a professional artist at this uh, point. Okay. Um, I do sell some pieces. Yeah. Um, I've been painting since 2006. Okay. Um, full, full force. And, uh -huh. uh, yeah. So. Yeah. So, you know, the thing that I found uh, uh, cool about her, about your work is that it's both has an abstract element to it, but you can also, you know, you're, you're depicting scenes still. And so it's both, you know, some representational and abstract. Uh, I've had other abstract artists on the show that are just totally abstract in, in, uh, in the images that they produce. So you're kind of, you know, combining a little bit of both. Uh, and, uh, and it was your uh, horse Titan uh, behind you that really was like, I thought was like one of the coolest things I'd seen in a while. So uh, how's, how, uh, how did you get into doing the art that you're doing? Um, I, I have uh, artists in my family. Uh, my mom is a very Thomas Kincaid. She can copy an image and make it look exactly like the photograph. Yeah. And I grew up being told I couldn't paint um, because I couldn't do that. Um, and then I uh, decided one day that I was just going to do it anyway because yeah. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. And <laughs> so I've kind of come up with my own way of doing things because right. I see things in color before I see the object. So mm -hmm. I'll see a color, and so I, I just explore color yeah, right. more than anything. And so that's, I think, where I get what I get. Mm -hmm. I can pick my colors, and then I can just turn it into something. Right, yeah. And um, so you've been doing this for going on about 12 years now. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and your pieces also uh, tend to be on the large side. Yeah. yeah. I'm a, I like to be gestural. I like expressive strokes, and I like to go big or go home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, you can, in looking at your work, uh, you can see that there's a lot of physical expressiveness uh, in the style, in the strokes, uh, in how the colors lay down. Uh, I find that, uh, uh, that process and how you're putting it together really kind of cool to see. Um, is there, how do you go about um, developing your ideas when you get an idea to, to do a piece, for example. Uh, I mean, is it, uh, do you get the basic idea uh, shape-wise or is it just starting out with just a color idea and then developing the shapes? Um, it kind of depends. The, um, like this is just the, the this fathom and it just comes from just playing around with paint on the canvas. So I yeah. drag color across color and um, I was in the Navy, so I kind of pull a lot of water themes into a lot of things. I like, I like the idea of boats and the mechanical structures. So this this was a play on mm -hmm. organic and water and fluid against a very structured background. Yeah. Um, and so I just played with color on that one. Um, this is a conceptual painting. I came up with a random black and white drawing and wanted to turn it into color. And right. so this is a mixed media playing with different colors and patterns and trying to get it to look like something focusing more on color than shape. Okay. Um, and then with the horse, um, I was looking, I like Frisian horses, um, but I also used to rescue and train horses. Oh, okay. And so this is Titan. He was an Andalusian thoroughbred mix that I'd actually rescued. And um, so I just decided to paint him and he's, he was a gray horse and I thought he needed more color. Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. So I just, I don't know, they just, 
they, sometimes my paintings just happen. I surprise myself most of the time. I'm like, oh, that's what we're doing today. So <laughs> okay. I try not to have a lot of plans because then, you know, life is happening while you're making other plans. And so <laughs> yeah, I, just, right. I just try to make things fun uh -huh. and enjoy the process more than anything. Yeah, so. yeah well, you know, that's, uh, that's certainly uh, a time-honored uh, approach that a lot of artists uh, take in terms of you know, they, they're just very kind of free form in, in, in their idea generating. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I know other artists go to the other extreme and like have to plan every detail out of what they're doing. Yeah. Uh, but uh, but there's, uh, there's a lot to be uh, uh, seen and enjoyed in the more expressive openness kind of a, a, a idea generating process. Yeah. And, uh, and it's cool to see in, in how you do it with your art. Now, um, in your, um, when you, once you start a project, that you, know, you start, you know, you get that canvas and you start working, I mean, what's the general length of time that you're spending on a given piece? Um, I have 16 hours into Titan. Yeah. Um, I have four hours into the Peacock behind you, so. Yeah. It just depends. This one was probably six or seven hours yeah. um, from beginning to end. Yeah. Um, it just, I just play around and build on it and, and some are more and, complicated. And at what point when you're, what, what is it about the completion of a piece that tells you I'm done? That, you know, that you're, you're, what you've been working on is. For me, they're never done. Yeah. Um, I have a hard time with that. I've had paintings and I'll, I think they're never going to get done and I'll paint over them. Uh -huh. So a lot of my canvases have multiple paintings underneath them. Oh, um, be... But I will post pictures of them to yeah. friends and family and then if somebody says, I really like that, I want it, I'm yeah. done. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> that's, 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 I guess that's one way to know. Yeah, right? <laughs> I, I could work on them forever. Um, but then there are some, like this Fathom, it just happened. And I just stood back and looked at it and I was like, it's done. Uh -huh. um, nobody told me it was done. I just figured it was. Now I can look at it and see things that I'd like to go back and fix, but I'm not going to because it's done. Right. Okay. So I'll just play around with the next one and yeah, and try to fix what I needed to or do something different. Yeah. Well, in going through uh, your website, I, I mean, I, there were like several uh, kind of like water sailing kind of. Uh, images yeah. that are like part of a series that uh, that look to be like at least part you know uh, a, a theme that you were uh, exploring. Yeah, I uh, I do that a lot. I'll start with a theme and then I do like eight paintings of the same thing with different colors and those were profile. The ships are in profile and they're called smooth sailing and I have five I think in the series uh -huh. and uh, um, then I did another one. It's a mechanical. It was circles and the the rectangles in the background and I decided to combine the the boats with the rectangles and that's how this one happened. I decided to do the, sh the boat coming straight on instead of a profile and mm -hmm. it changed the whole thing and so I really liked it and so smooth sailing stopped and now yeah. I'm into <laughs> something different. So right, that's yeah. the way it is, yeah. Is, uh, uh, when you start going down a, or pursuing a particular theme, is there, uh, is there a point at which you uh, figure that you've kind of maxed out what you can do on that exploration and, and you know and then move on to another idea yeah <clears throat> I get to that point it's usually when I've um, it starts to not go the way I want it to go and my I'm pushing a boundary in a different direction and then something completely different happens with the picture mm -hmm. um, that's what happens a lot of times the peacock wasn't going to be a peacock right. it just happened that way I was actually trying to do something completely different and it turned out to be a bird. <laughs> so it just sometimes it's like, okay, well, I need to move on to something different because yeah. that's where it's going. So right. A lot of times the paintings take on their own process and their own life, and I just have to let that happen. I can't fight it. Yeah. I had a really good art instructor at Oregon State, and I was focusing really hard on this painting, and I couldn't get it to work. And she came across and struck it with green. She painted green over the face of it and she goes you're done try something different yeah. uh, so from that moment on I've I haven't become too invested in what it needs to be it just needs to happen right so that was a big learning experience for me yeah so. now when were you uh, uh, going through uh, that learning process uh, 
Um, from 2008 to about 2012, yeah. I did fine arts, studied bachelor's of fine arts at Oregon State. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. And um, so, uh, in your, uh, your, you've got your website online mm -hmm. and you got your Facebook. Um, are there other uh, uh, arenas in which you're being showcased or featured right now? Uh, do you have any representation as an artist? No, I don't. I have uh, I did a couple student showings in Bend when I was up there, but I haven't done anything professionally here. Mm -hmm. um, I've done a couple craft shows and shown my artwork and had a couple people interested, and I've got some galleries that I'm trying to work with. Right. Um, it's just a matter of finding the time. Yeah. And having the confidence to step out and say, okay, this is what I can do. I can do this for myself. Mm -hmm. I haven't, I'm not real good about talking about myself. <laughs> well, <laughs> so. consider this your, your, your first step towards yeah. expanding your, your experience yeah. in that arena. Yeah, right? that's, this is it. Yeah. <laughs> so. I mean, this is, it's, it's local, but it's still a, a step up from probably what you've uh, experienced before. Yeah. So, so, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I, I take this show as a, as a means to kind of, uh, you know, educate the valley to all the variety of artistic talent that's here yeah. in the valley, uh, and to kind of help give some exposure to uh, to artists that I find that uh, uh, are uh, able to come onto the show, yeah. and uh, in kind of help advance them a little bit, you know. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and so hopefully this kind of helps you in that arena as well. Uh, you don't at this point you're not like doing it to like uh, you haven't like done any like the winter art fairs or. Anything like that yet? Nope. This is it. <laughs> okay, well, this is your first step. So, yeah. you know, uh, I mean, as we're going into the, uh, as we go into the fall, you're going, there's going to be a whole series of art fairs here in the valley. Yeah. Uh, that I would think that you would do well to go in and, and uh, exhibit and, and get your stuff out there to the public. Yeah, I'm looking yeah. forward to it. I've, I've thought about it for many years, and uh, I think I'm finding a place with my life that I think... You know, I've honed in on my my theme and my style and where I want to go with things. So, mm -hmm. but it takes a long time sometimes to get there. You know? It does. I it took does. the long way around. I like yeah. to tell well, people. Well, <laughs> you know, we all find our path and our our, our route in yeah. you know in its own way, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. um, but uh, you but you have certainly have established a defined style for yourself, right? right at this point, <clears throat> so uh, that is something uh, that uh, that other artists haven't quite got to yet yeah so in a lot of ways you're kind of uh you're you're at an advanced level and we're uh, as an artist you know having that defined style that is kind of makes you recognizable yeah uh, you know so uh so that's a great benefit to you uh that's and, good. <laughs> and you know so um now uh in if someone comes to you to commission a piece uh what's kind of like the general price range for someone to wanting to buy uh, an art piece from you? Um, it kind of depends on what they're looking for. I, um, you know, I've done pieces for people um, anywhere from, and it depends on the size and the space. So I like to get to know the person and get to know the space and what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. um, but a general rule of thumb is, you know, by hour, by the hour. And mm -hmm. so I'll price it by the hour, how long it'll take me to do it. Yeah. And, um, so I mean, like something like Titan, he's about six hundred dollars. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, yeah, it just uh, depends. And at this point, uh, the art that you're selling is just all original pieces, mm -hmm. correct? You're not doing like any uh, prints yet of, of pieces. I don't even know if I want to do that. Okay. I, I don't. I don't want to. I want to be able to sell it as this is you own this. Yeah. This is yours and only yours. Mm -hmm. I don't want to mass market myself and have myself become the next Walmart <laughs> coffee mug artist, you know? <laughs> okay, well, that's, um, yeah, you know. I'm not interested in the mass marketing or, in, I, you know, I, I like to, I mean, each piece that people get, they get a certificate of originality with it yeah. and it just is theirs and I won't, I don't license it for anything else. Yeah. So. Well, that, uh, that is certainly... Uh, you know, that's the kind of business decision that, that every artist has to make at some mm -hmm. point, you know, how they want to get their art out there, how they want to make their living, and how they want to kind of uh, 
you know, kind of control the level of distribution on what they have created, you know. Yeah. So uh, is if you're serious about uh, trying to stick into a, a, a fine art artist image and representation, then you know that uh, what you're doing is certainly a legitimate uh, path to certainly go down. Yeah, I just think it's more. I don't. I want somebody who hangs it on their wall to enjoy it being on their wall and not see it on somebody's dish towel. Yeah. You know, to me, it, it's got. It's for one person uh -huh. in my mind. One yeah. person's gonna love it. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, I know if I had the money, I'd be going <laughs> Titan right now. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. that, that, that is such a cool painting. Yeah. Um, is uh, at this point, uh, what do you want the, the, the audience to know about uh, your art uh, that I haven't gotten to yet in terms of our discussion? Is there, is there like a, in, in your process, is there, do you also, do you kind of stick to like a, do you have like a certain art philosophy that kind of guides you a little bit in the, in what you do, or is it just kind of? Uh, I just think it's having fun and yeah. enjoying what you do. And when you stop liking it and stop enjoying it, then you know you need to do something different. Yeah. So as long as somebody likes to paint, they're an artist, or they like to sculpt, or they like whatever they like to do, it's they're yeah. an artist. I don't, I don't have any particular. Yeah. Yeah, I don't yeah. know how to say it, but I'm. It's just enjoy the process mm -hmm. more than anything. Well, we have some additional images of your work mm -hmm. that the uh, control room could bring up, and we'll uh, kind of go through and talk about some of those additional images. Now, this here is another uh, horse image. Yeah, that's Caballo, and uh, it was a gift to the real estate agent who sold us our home. Oh, so I okay. painted it for her, yeah. and she really likes it. And uh, All right, let's go on to the next. That's a very uh, odd angle of a birch tree. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. It's in Texas, so. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. all right. Um, that was an art class. We had to do an, an interpretation of Turner. Uh -huh. And so I decided to do the burning tree. Uh -huh. um, so, and I have a thing with balance and numbers. And so three and is one of the numbers that comes up a uh, lot. Okay, and, all right. Yeah. Yeah. That one's called Hope. Um, that's actually, I painted for a friend whose daughter was going through a tough time. And okay. it's another play on spatial alignment and yeah. depth and everything. So right. <clears throat> that's some birch trees. It's called A Walk with Nana. Um, I had a dream that I was walking with my great grandma through some trees. Oh, okay. There they are. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Austin. I went to Austin, Texas, and. Uh, came back and painted a very weird vision of the city. <laughs> There's, yeah. yeah. Uh, these are um, some Japanese lanterns that uh, I saw in a magazine and I decided to paint them in a very abstract way. Mm -hmm. So. Well that actually, that image particularly uh, kind of makes me think also a little bit of like a Monet and the water lilies, and yeah. kind of it's kind of got that kind of color yep. uh, theme to it. Yeah. yeah. Right, let's go on to the next. That's a smooth sailing. That's one of the sailboats. This is like the last I think in that series, and the yeah. boat is almost dissolved into the background completely. So I figured yeah. I was time to change up. Yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that's a oak leaf. I'm not real happy with that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well. <laughs> Uh, Fathom, that's the next in the, that was a step up from the Smooth Sailing series. Uh-huh, okay. And this one I called Mechanical. Um, it was the first abstract I'd done that way. And I haven't ever, tr I haven't tried to copy it or play with that one yet. Um, I can't tell if it's a sea streetscape or a river going through a canyon. Uh -huh. But I've had yeah. a lot of people tell me all sorts of things yeah. about it. So. Uh -huh. okay. Yeah. And this was a, um, a pour painting. It's a technique where you take and mix paints with a medium and you just pour it out and see what happens. Uh, and okay. That's what happened. Yeah. This one I actually sold uh, a couple weeks ago at a craft show. 
It's um, Hawaii, in my interpretation of Hawaii. It's yeah. called Aloha. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, this one is another conceptual drawing. I started out with a black and white and played with colors with it. Um, and so. Yeah, all right. This one I called Stepping Stone. Um, it's actually a picture of Subtle Lake. Um, there was a big fire up in that area, mm -hmm. and I grew up in Bend, and so Subtle Lake was where I spent my summers, and so that was the lake on fire. Oh, okay. <clears throat> uh, that's just a drawing on paper, actually, ink and a little bit of paint and gouache, yeah. and just a playing with making the background the color and the image not color. Right, okay. Uh, this is, um, <laughs> it's kind of a funny, it's a cave with peacock feathers sewn onto the canvas. <laughs> so, okay. this is playing. And this is actually a triptych. It's three, in, three different canvases together. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it stands on its own. It's kind of like a screen room divider. Yeah, right, okay. Um, that's just a meadow painting I did playing around. Uh-huh, okay. All right, so we're back. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's a really uh, 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 great selection of images, although I find that it was, like with the leaf image, that that was uh, something that, a piece that you're not particularly satisfied yeah. with. Yeah. So as an artist, when you're in the process of creating a piece, how often does that dissatisfaction come into, uh, occur and come into play with the... Uh, I think it happens at every, at, with every painting at some point. Yeah. Um, there's always something that doesn't go right. I had another instructor who said that there are no mistakes in art. It's, it's just the process. Mm -hmm. And the leaf was, um, I think, my second time painting with oils. Yeah. And I couldn't, I just never, it never, it didn't come out the way I wanted it to. So I haven't tried to fix it. It's still sitting in my studio and yeah. I look at it every day and go, oh, I don't <laughs> like that painting, but I haven't, because it was my second yeah. process, I've kind of kept it as a way to remind myself of what I don't right. like to do and what I don't want. Now, in terms of, of media that you use, are you are all your paintings done like in oil or are you using acrylics? What are you using primarily? Um, <clears throat> I use both. Um, I will start a lot of paintings with acrylic and then switch to oil if I want a certain look or a different texture. Uh -huh. um, but I also use mixed media with acrylics and so I, I'll play with both. Okay. And um, uh, you also mentioned like, uh, like on the, one of the pieces, you also use gouache as, mm -hmm. as one of the media. Um, and so like when you do like a kind of like a mixed media, are you also like incorporating other materials beyond like the oils and the other uh, for like a mixed media kind of a thing? I mean, I, like some artists that I've had on the show uh, actually incorporate like dirt and other like natural yeah. materials. Um, I have pumice. I've incorporated stepping stone has pumice in it. So the log is actually really textured. Uh -huh. um, this one has a paper, um, like paper mache, right. shredded paper. And it also has, um, I've cut, I've drawn out other images and attached them to the canvas. So they're not, it's, they're, those aren't painted onto the canvas. They're actually attached to the canvas and then painted over. Okay. Um, so, and I'll attach key phrases or something that I like to see if I because I don't have very good handwriting so I like to find something that's really printed nicely and I'll put it on the canvas. Okay and yeah. how uh, how often are you doing like the mixed media approach to pieces versus not doing mixed media? I mean you, uh, it's probably 50-50. Oh okay so yeah so it's a good uh, you're you're going back and forth between yeah the, uh, uh, quite often. Yeah. Okay well Corey I appreciate you coming on the yeah. show uh, you, you produce some really great, unique stuff. Uh, I really like your style, and, uh, and I wish you the best of luck uh, in all your future art endeavors. Great, thank all you. Right, I appreciate right. it. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you for coming on. Yeah, no problem. Okay, so we have reached the end of our show, Rogue Artisans and Crafters, and we thank you at home for joining us and learning about our featured artist, Corey Leanne. We wish to thank Corey for agreeing to come on to the show to discuss her life as an artist. And I encourage you, the viewer, to uh, visit Corey's official site and Facebook page to learn more about her artwork. We also want to thank our crew who have made it possible to put this program together and to thank RVTV for their wonderful studio facility, 
which allows us to produce shows such as this one. If you'd like to become a studio producer and create your own public access show, you can contact RVTV to learn how. You can watch the show on Tuesday evenings at 8 p.m. and Thursday evenings at 11.30 p.m. on Channel 15 of the Ashland Home Network and in the rest of Southern Oregon via Charter Cable on Channel 182. You can also find all episodes of Rogue Artisans and Crafters at archive.org. You can also visit RVTV online at rvtv.sou.edu and find live streaming of all RVTV shows. You can also follow our show on Facebook by visiting and liking our official show page. Just search for Rogue Artisans and Crafters. So I'm your host, David Glamour Dave Meenow, and we will see you next time.